Tom, I love you. Thank you. As much as a man can love another man. You'd be surprised. Tom, uh, your, your advice, women, groundbreaking. Groundbreaking. <laughs> I gotta say I love you. My thank husband you. turned me on to you, and I totally thank you for saving our marriage. Your voice was in my head the moment you said no condom, and uh, I owe you big time for that. I want to meet somebody, see if she uh, can get into me, and just uh, take her home. And then you can get into her. Exactly. <laughs> I appreciate what you're doing with, I think, waking people up and getting them to take a look at how bad and pathetic that we've become. I know your whole game, though. What game is that? Subliminal. Uh, oh, it's subliminal. Subliminal, I subliminal see. mind tricks. Of, subliminal of mind tricks. Of the sheep, because most of the people that... I don't have to do anything subliminal with you. I can tell you right to your face. We're not talking about an artist here. We're talking about a working actor, which you is a job. You haven't seen his work in Batman yet. I'll oh, you, his work in Batman. That, that, that's that pro prove he's our Batman. Are you are you stuttering? So I was just talking to my wife a short time ago about that. She's all all down and sad about it. I said, you know what I said? Anyone who takes their own life, no, I don't have any sympathy for them because I was held up a long time ago, back in 87, and I developed PTSD, and I have an anxiety problem myself, but I have... Tony on the top like his show. Hello. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Tony. How you doing, big guy? How you doing? I'm doing all right. Sorry to talk like that. I get like that as a New Yorker when I get annoyed. Not 15 seconds. It took 15 seconds for him to get it in. Hey, I was just on my way home right now. I was just looking through the radio. I found you. Know, I heard you on the line. Uh, seems like you don't believe in marriage. You heard me on the line? Did, did you hear me on the radio or on the phone? On uh, both. I love how morons like you call in and act like you're revealing some deep, dark I'm secret. A moron. Like you're bonus. Oh, we, clearly you are. Oh, okay. Got a twenty-five dollar gift card to the movies. Does that mean a fifteen dollar meal? It, well, it does. Or, or it skip the meal altogether. Why are you having a meal? I don't know. I'm I'm a big guy. I like to eat. So She's eat. Not so eat. big, but she loves to eat too. Yeah, but uh, you eat before you see her. Ah, very true. Touche. Have you ever looked around the other women at Vons? Yeah. What do it's they look kind of like? Sad. Yeah. And would you say the vast majority of them are married? I don't even know. What do you think? <laughs> Vons at 10 o'clock in the morning. Somebody is at work paying for those fruits and vegetables. True. And then comes big fat cow in the stretch, uh, the full stretch pants. But I'm thinking but she the drooling before with... she got married. No, because what man would marry a cow? Man, I just started listening to you yesterday, man. I don't know what they've been teaching me out here, man, but you speak the truth, man. What is the most important thing that you've learned here so far? That I ain't got to take no girl out to dinner to get some. Let some other guy who's trying to hit it with that uh, get get exactly. her the chicken sandwich. Let some other dude take her and spend a couple hundred dollars on her dinner and all that. I'm straight, man. Either McDonald's or a Hot Pocket. <laughs> A Hot Pocket and a Pop-Tart for dessert. Exactly. You can put one in each toaster slot. And if you're good, you might get a Capri Sun. How about a Sunny D? Come on. Oh, yeah. you you giving them too much, right? <laughs> From a place we're not allowed to reveal in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Wow, you're bad. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We are together again on the radio with wide open telephones on this Friday. Southern California, by the way, in case you're not here with us where we live, is washed out, soggy, muddy. 
And depending on how high up we live, icy and snowy. It's just scary driving out there. Not because I'm afraid of skidding or running into anybody. I'm afraid they're going to run into me because I know. Because we've had so little rain over the past few years that uh, most of my neighbors don't know how to drive in the rain. Anywhere I go, anything can happen. And where I live in the Hollywood Hills, it's even worse. People coming up and down the hills, going around curves on narrow streets. Scary stuff. I mean, scary stuff happens here anyway. Wasn't it about a week ago that a dump truck was in the Hollywood Hills going up a steep roadway? And I don't know if it lost the brakes or the transmission went haywire or something. And the truck uh, rolled off this hill and right into somebody's house. It's like my worst nightmare where I live. Ooh, we. So imagine adding in the rain and the mud. Up where I live, you know, the city of Los Angeles, which is owned and paid for by developers, the mayor pretty much is the welcome mat, and developers wipe their feet on him as they continue to uh, hunt down and destroy every piece of vacant land that remains here in Los Angeles. Uh, on my street, uh, we have a situation. The city of Los Angeles claimed that there was going to be no more of this carving into hillsides in order to build houses. That this was not good for the hills, and it was uh, not good for mudslides, and it was not good for the natural beauty of the hills and what have you, and uh, that this was going to come to an end. And after they made that claim, the city approved not one, not two, but three houses next to each other, all carved into a hillside. And the uh, developer and the contractor there just doing a wonderful job, as my street every day is awash in mud and rocks and pebbles and debris. Fantastic. I want to thank the city of L.A. and uh, remind them it is an election year. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to do my level best to vote out every bastard in office this year. If you live in L.A., I recommend you do the same. Just vote all the bastards out. I don't even care if you've read the ballot pamphlet. I don't care if you know what's happening. Just vote. Whoever the incumbent is, vote for the other person. Get these bastards out of there. Seriously. That's what I'm doing. They haven't done us any favors, I'll tell you that. Jesus Christ. By the way, somebody, remember the mayor was having an affair with that uh, TV reporter? Um, I'm just going to say somebody sent me a super secret email about what the mayor's been up to lately. Complete with a photograph Yikes. It's going to be some more fun happening down at City Hall sometime soon. That's all I can tell you. This person had names, a phone number, photograph, put his name and email address in there. For further information, call him. Ah. So we'll, uh, we'll just see what happens here in L.A. as time goes on. Totally amazing. Wide open telephones on this Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind, wherever you may be. And when I say wherever you may be, I mean, people are listening on podcasts in all 50 states. They listen to our online stream everywhere. And if it is between 3 and 8 p.m. Pacific time where you are, you're listening to the show live. Is that true, Dean? Afghanistan? We got a call from Afghanistan. I, uh, 
Got an email from a guy in Georgia who was very happy about this phone call I had uh, with Lexi the other day. Who was living with an abusive boyfriend. We're not on the air in Georgia, not anywhere in Georgia. But um, I get mail from around the world. Wherever you might be, you just call this telephone number. We can talk about anything that's on your mind, anything at all. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. And if you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the air. Especially, by the way, if you're in any way offended or if you think there's something I won't talk about on the air, well, you, you give it your best shot, pal. Just call us at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You know, I'm uh, feeling a little soggy today, but I'm uh, very anxious to uh, get to these phone calls as we continue. Tom. Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. So... For you, you only get from women you sex, and that's it. Yes, because that's what women are good for. Oh, oh my God. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones. Eric on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Sorry? How goes it? It's going great. Are you tired of this rain? Well, uh, I enjoy the rain. I enjoy uh, you know, if, if I'm at home. True, true. All right. If I am at home, I enjoy sitting there and uh, uh, whether it be uh, lighting a fire or, um, you know, um, just hanging back with a couple of drinks or something. It's, 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 it's kind of cool. Indeed, indeed. I had a I had a question for you. Yes. I was, uh, I was curious. Who uh, who would you prefer, Barack or Hillary? Um, if that were the only choice, and in the end it may be, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, my preference would be Bill Clinton. <laughs> but. <laughs> but uh, yeah, minus Bill Clinton, um, I think I would have to, by a hair, choose Barack Obama. All right. Uh, because, uh, I don't know, I just, uh, for me, Hillary Clinton just doesn't have it. Well, yeah, I, I agree. And but she's a chick. That's, that's, see, that's the, that's the main thing. I mean, I, I'm still in high school, and even when I deal with a female teacher, it's unbearable. Yeah. It's, it's one of the worst things, and especially in the LAUSD system. You know what I'm talking about, right? I, I think yeah. I think some of the uh, the dirty campaigning that's going to go on. You know, there's a lot more things you can say about Hillary Clinton because then they can attack Bill Clinton again. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, but here's the thing about Bill that I don't mind. That man played a mean saxophone on Arsenio Hall. <laughs> he did. Way back when. Yeah, what instrument does Hillary play, for God's sake? I, I, I can't even say the skin flute. <laughs> it's it's I just w- the Yenta card. I'm, I'm not convinced that she's ever played that, and uh, of course we know that uh, Monica Lewinsky could play it. Oh, yes, we do. She played She played first chair. <laughs> uh, Tom, it's you, you and Corolla. You get me through the day. That's our gig, baby. Yeah. I, what, what, that Bonaduce, though, I'm not going to lie. That that hour before you come on, after hearing Frosty and Frank and that broad, you know, that, that hour of Bonaduce is pretty slow. Well, uh, I, you know, again, everybody has their own taste in these shows. I happen to really like Danny Bonaduce personally, and I have a lot of respect for him professionally. Mm-hmm. But I know I'm not some people's cup of tea, and everybody probably isn't sometimes. Here's the thing about you, though, Dad. What's that? You, you have you have subjects to talk about. Bonaduce kind of he constantly is talking about his marital problems and his former addiction. 
he was he's always reaching for that stuff. Whereas you got you got an interesting, you know, curric curriculum. Well, working with one hour is a challenge. <laughs> yeah, true, true. That's a challenge. And uh you know, I think Danny's up to the task. Uh, all right, yeah. But again, we're not all gonna agree on that and as long as you like my show, that's all I can worry about. That's yeah. all I can control. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, too, because I'm nearing the uh, college or military route of my life. I'm wondering, what, like, what, what should I do? You know, like, did you go to college to get a communications degree? or? Stupidly, I did. And I went broke in the middle of my second year and had to drop out. Huh. Uh, well, because my father yeah. refused to uh, support me. If I went to college and did not live at home, and I had no interest in living at home, uh -huh. so I said, fine, I'll just take out loans, and that's what I did. I took out loans, and I had all the loans for four years. I had them all in my bank account, and I spent through them in a year and a half. And by the way, I was working. It's not like I was partying in school. I was working and going to school full time. Huh. Yeah. But I went broke after a year and a half. Okay. Yeah, it's either college for me or uh, maybe the army. Oh. Well, I think college is a good idea, and if you think you can't afford college, going to the army is a way to pay for college, but it's very risky. Yeah, well, I mean, I can afford it, but you know. You know, what they don't tell you when you sign up for the army is you might die. Yeah. Yeah, that's assumed. Yeah, and uh, these days, uh, they're sending every able body they've got to some place yeah. where bombs are dropping. Uh, there's no uh, doing jumping jacks under the Eiffel Tower like those TV commercials years ago. <laughs> in an army of one and all that. Right. Stuff. This is they're not oh, doing yeah. that. There's no there's no uh, there's no jumping jacks under the Eiffel Tower anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's just a hot desert. That's <laughs> that's where you're going and the bombs are dropping. So think hard before you go into the military. All right, we'll do. Hey, Tom, uh, that's all I got. Can you uh, take me out, uh, Lacey Peterson style? You know I can, Eric. Hammer. Hey. Hammer. Hammer, Mitchell. Jason on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Going great. Hey, I just called in. I've been listening to you for about a year now. I had friends who listened to you for a long time. They told me to listen to you, and I never really, uh, you know, listened to afternoon radio, and I started listening to the station, and then started listening to you. And uh, I listened to your theories on marriage, and uh, back on I me, mean, I'm a newly married guy, about six months. Um, an engineer just graduated. My wife's also an engineer, just graduated, same school. And uh, one of the things in my life, I, I never thought I'd get married, uh, maybe until I was 30. I was kind of like what my dad did. And uh, when I met her, you know, things kind of worked out where, you know, we both wanted kids. We just kind of matched. And one of the things that I thought about uh, your theory is completely valid for guys, I think, who are looking to just get married to some lady who really doesn't, you know, contribute anything to them financially. And, they're, you know, she's basically just, you know, um, there for, you know, just get laid. And what do you what do you think about you know with the how things are getting so expensive and you can't have you know you know really single people making a ton of money unless you're in an industry like yours where you know you're an entertainer and you know the guys who make it. Big. But that's not true. More people are living alone than ever before. No, I agree, and I, and they rightly so. They should. But um, what I'm saying is that maybe uh, women who can contribute more financially, who are getting you know advanced degrees and working and you know, fields where they're making money can also be contributing to a, a man's life on an economic level as well as a social level. But, you're, but the point is women spend 80% of the money. That's a fact. 80%. That's why so much of television is aimed at women. Because the advertising is aimed at women. Because women spend 80% of the money. That means if you get married, even if she makes 50% of the money, she'll spend 80% of the money. Well, that, that is true from a... Uh, Think about this. Have you ever heard the following phrase? <laughs> they say it all the time. After divorce, a man's standard of living increases. 
and a woman's standard of living decreases. Well, that's true because most of the women who are married are not employed. They find they've or 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 they are underemployed, or they spend more than they make. Yeah, that's true, and. And so they end up, like some of my exes, living in crappy apartments somewhere (laughs) while I live in a beautiful house in the hills that I buy a second beautiful house. Uh, Of course, the standard of living of the others goes down. I work harder and I make more money and I spend less. That is true. And what what I was thinking, though, is, uh, you know, about my personal situation is that, you know, my wife and I are both professionals. And we live, my standard of living now is much higher than what I could afford if I was single. Like, I have friends of mine who recently graduated with me. Yeah, but in what way? Do you do you live in Beverly Hills, Bel Air, uh, uh, Malibu? I have, I have a nice house in Burbank. In Burbank? Wife, Wait a minute. Where were you living before? Uh, the ghetto? Was, Where were you living? Yeah, well, I, actually, I was. I was living in uh, not the greatest part of Northridge going to school. Well, so it's it not exactly a, a ghetto. It was a crappy apartment in Northridge. <laughs> now you're living in the good part of Burbank. Yeah, I am, actually, and we're looking to buy a house up in the hills here in Burbank right. in the next, like, six months. Because, all right. uh, the way but you realize that's all built on a house of cards. If you get divorced, you will you will lose your home. Well, sure, but... The, the well, point sure, but... Is, <laughs> well, the point I was trying to make is that many men, I think, are approaching marriage the wrong way. They're just looking... I mean, if, you know, because I'm, 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 I agree with a lot of what you say. If a man who is, you know, just getting married because he wants to get laid on a regular basis or because he think she's hot or you know because you think you know they're they're meant for each other those kind of things that that is a rocky or, or a, not a very solid foundation for a marriage and my wife and i actually were friends for you know a number of years before we started dating and before we even became serious and so our marriage is basically more of a friendship um with you know with obvious with the obvious benefits whereas a lot of guys i know who got married young did it stupidly they just ran it they oh this chick's so hot and i love her and and that, that's a wrong reason to get married. And I also, my philosophy is I don't think people should be getting married unless they want to have kids. I think even if you love someone to be a life partner, you don't need a piece of paper to stay with someone, just like you said. You know, I don't need a contract to keep me from cheating on somebody. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. And I think marriage should be an institution only for raising kids. And if you don't want kids, don't get married. Even then, you are sacrificing by signing that contract. You are not benefiting. Kids will benefit. The woman will benefit. But you won't. Well, I want to benefit my kids. That's why I got married. I want, I've always wanted kids since I was, you know. Oh, so you're putting your kids ahead of yourself. As long as you realize that you are not going to benefit, well, well, at least you're doing it, at least you're doing it in an informed manner. Yeah, and because, I mean, like, the relationship I have with my father, he was a single father and raised me and my brother. And, like, the relationship that we have, like, we, now that I'm grown and I'm, I'm helping my dad out in many ways, it's like he helped me out. Because, I mean, we just went in with a, you know, we got a, a condo with him and the friends in Hawaii. And so now we have an investment because my wife and I don't own a house yet. And, and so we went on investment with him. So what I'm, you know, I'm looking at my future, too, is in, in my kids as well. And so if I raise my kids to be financially successful, looks like my father raised me, then that, that's kind of where I'm looking at me benefiting from this whole uh, situation, getting married and having kids. But again, you're not benefiting. Okay, because whatever you're getting, you're only getting as long as you're married. If you get divorced, uh, you lose your house, you lose half or more of everything you've earned over this period of time. Plus, you'll be paying her for child support and alimony. Well, she makes more than I do, so she got a today. But you haven't had a kid yet. That's true. That day will come when she hardly ever goes to work, and then they're going to say, "Well." You make one hundred and six thousand dollars a year, and she makes zero. Therefore, you have to give her fifty thousand dollars. Well, it is a gamble that I'm, I'm counting on my wife actually to keep working. She wants to keep working. She spent. You know, they five always years say years that years until years. they are pregnant, and then they have a baby, and then they feel guilty about dropping the kid off at a daycare center. Well, our, our family does live here locally, so that we we can. Either daycare or family, but my—I mean, it is a gamble I'm taking that my wife is going to want to work, and we've talked at length about this before we even, you know, got engaged. I made sure that you know this is because I want someone who's a partner, not someone who sits on a couch eating bonbons all day. Yeah, but they were all a partner in the beginning, Jason. <laughs> so what? So what you're saying is that you don't? I mean, I, I know your beliefs on marriage are completely against it, but do you think that I have a valid point if if guys are going to get married? 
if, if you have it that you, you know, want to have kids and you want to get married, not just, you know, just get married in general, but you have a purpose, um, that you should be looking for a woman who not just, a, you know, my wife is, is beautiful, and uh, but at the same time, she brings more to the table than just that. She's but we don't be, know. You have no. The reason you don't have a point is because just because she's doing something today doesn't mean she'll be doing it in five years. That is true, but it, at least her potential is better than that. Than uh, you can't. You know what? Uh, <laughs> some of your favorite sports teams have potential that they never realize. The Clippers had potential, remember? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How's that going? Uh, not so well for them. Right. So the point is, you can't build your life on on on, on potential. I, I agree, but uh, remember when Andrew going... Bynum had potential and nobody really cared. Everybody was upset. Everybody thought he should be traded, uh, <laughs> unless he's actually contributing something. Potential is irrelevant. Well, the, the reason why it was a good gamble for me, too, is uh, her mom works, and the people that she looked up to in school are women engineers who had, you know, had kids and continued to work and still work, and that's kind of why, you know, and after talking to her, that's why I thought it would be a good gamble, but the reason I wanted to call in is, to, uh, you know, my, I, I just wanted to point out that you said... If it you works for you, that look, if it works for you, I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise, but I'm not going to use you as a recommendation for others... Uh, to do what you did, because for most men, what you did is a bad idea. Well, for most men who make uninformed decisions about marriage, I think that's why... Well, I, that's most why Americans make uninformed decisions about everything. <laughs> More, sub, uh, subprime mortgages, credit cards, college. Uh, do I need to get on the list? No, I, I agree, but that, that, I think the one of the informed... Letting their girlfriend have a MySpace page? I mean, come on. Yeah, I, I just wanted to point out that, you know, you talk about, you, you, made, a, you made a point of talking about all those uh, bachelors who make, you know, much more than they would. And the, the guys who are millionaires who were surveyed said that they, you know, they would have, you know, probably made more money had they not gotten married or, you know, they made more, more money after a divorce. Yeah, how much you make, and by the way, we see all these studies that say that men who are married make more money. But you see, how much you make is not as important as how much you keep. That's true. We, my wife and I do spend the most, well, we're starting out, so most of our money does go towards, you know, car and house and everything. But I'm just saying that my quality of life now and in the future will be enhanced by the fact that we both make, you know, we're mi middle class by, our, by ourselves, but we're upper middle class together. Uh, as of today. Yes. And how much debt do you have, Jason? Right now, um, I've got a few thousand dollars and I'm be paid off uh, by the springtime. So no student loans? Uh, one student loan, but be, again, that'll be paid off pretty soon. They're, they're small amounts because I didn't have to take out that much. We worked uh, all through school as well. Car loan? Yeah, uh, two, uh, three, uh, three year deal, actually. I'm actually. Visa? Right now, so. uh, no, those are all getting paid off. The whole debt will be debt free before I So, out. how much is that debt? Right now, about 10 grand. 10 grand? That, that's, that's, the, that's joint debt or your debt? It's, uh, actually, it's joint debt if you count the car. Ten but, uh, grand, but that'll be gone. The money that we make, uh, the money that is after all the expenses, we have like two thousand dollars of discretionary income that goes towards this debt. So, like, like I said, by springtime, we'll be debt free because I don't want to bring in credit card debt when I'm trying to buy a house. So, I'll have zero debt by the time we're buying a house. And do you understand how hard it is to get a loan to buy a house right now? It's extremely hard, but I have. Uh, the prime credit, and uh, my wife's got. Well, so do have. so do I. Can I tell you something? I just. I just bought a house. Yeah, in Santa Barbara. You've been talking about Right, it. and uh, my FICO score is about 800. So I've got stellar credit. I've got a seven-figure income. I've got, um, you name it, uh, no, you know, no debt other than the mortgage on my current house, uh, which uh, I own 80% equity in my current house. <laughs> so I only have about 20% left to pay. Mm -hmm. All right. And I had to pay 25% down to get a loan. Yeah, that's what, uh, look, and that's something that we can do, though. The, the two of us combined will be able to. So only... you've got, well, let's say you're going to buy a $500,000 house, which is about average here in Southern California, right? No, we're looking for more like in the 650s. 650. Great. Yeah. So you're telling me. That you have one hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars in the bank. 
not right now, but my dad's going to be able to help us out, and we're going to be able to save some of that. And we'll probably look to put down 10%. And it won't, we won't get. Yeah, but uh, who's time. putting down? You, you know, <laughs> you, you can put down ten percent in two thousand three. Okay, but have you looked at how hard it is to get a mortgage now? Yeah, I have actually. One of the guys at work, uh, he moonlights as a, a, a lender and uh, real estate guy, and he he can get you a ten percent down loan. Yes, that's in the minimum. current market. In the current market, the minimum, yeah, is ten percent. He keeps telling me that, that that he's saying the same thing. You are putting down more twenty, maybe twenty five, but you yeah. No, I, was just, I mean, I, I agree with a lot of what you say, Tom, because men do make stupid decisions when getting married. And um, and I was just saying, if my, my example is if you make an informed decision for one reason, and one reason only, and that's to have kids, because I don't, I mean, I agree wholeheartedly with what you said, that men should not get married. You don't need a contract to not cheat on someone, and it's stupid to get married. And men do lose in the marriage, especially if you're just doing it because, ah, eh, you know, I, I like where I'm at right now, and we'll get married because she keeps pressuring me to, but... Like I said, I want to have kids in the next couple of years, and, and that's... Then you're going to put your kids ahead of you. Uh, but uh, for most men, this is uh, not a good decision. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-866. I don't trust anything that bleeds for a week and doesn't die. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's... The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. Something's weird with the mix, Art. I'm hearing my voice in the left channel and my music in the right channel. Something weird is happening in the studio. I wonder if that's on the air, too. Wow. Oh, well. Just a little techno geek conversation here on the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM, John in Aventura, Florida. You're on the Tom Likas Show on Wide Open Telephones. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, John. Tom, I've been a listener since 1998, and I wanted to just call you and thank you for the years of advice that has got me on the path to wealth. Do I tell. Think, Do tell. I mean, I remember back in... Early 2000s, late 90s, I took your advice, and you were, you know, I remember someone called the show complaining about, you know, these companies make this much money, these companies make that much money, it's not fair. And you were like, you know what, if you want to participate in it, buy the stock, do this, do that. And I, I honestly, I think I'm a carbon copy of everything that you say. I'm 29 years old, I'm educated, I have a decent job, I make about $115,000 a year with another raise coming, single, never been married. No kids. I have no debt except for a mortgage, a 15-year mortgage at 4.8%. I'm standing right now looking out at the intercoastal waterway on the 23rd floor of a place that's worth about $850,000 that I owe $150,000 on. Love it. And on display in my formal living room is my Lycus 101 logger. Really? Did you, buy that, did you buy that from eBay? Did you, get that, uh, did you buy that when it was new? Actually, I bought it when it was new. What happened was I couldn't make it out to the listener party. So what I did was I called uh, Jim Cook. I left a message on his voicemail, and somehow it came, and I got a package. I came, it came right to my door, and his, the return address was Studio City, so I know where it came from. And wow. I, and I'm forever grateful for it, and I'll always have it up. I totally love that. Now, um, in South Florida, where you live, um, this is probably the best opportunity to buy real estate. This is <laughs> outrageous. When I read what's happening with condos in Miami, I was blown away. Oh, no, you're right. And you are absolutely right. And I was just thinking about what you said the other uh, I think it's about a week and a half ago. You said that you don't feel sorry for any of the idiots that decided to take out adjustable rate mortgages to buy something they can't afford. And when they, and, and when they fall flat on their face, you are going to be there to buy the property dirt cheap. I've been, and, yes, I've been telling you I was going to do that for years. And I'm, in, I, and I'm in line right behind you because I want to get myself a weekend, like a weekend studio in South Beach. So I'm looking for the guy that's desperate, that's going to be losing his shirt. And when I find the right opportunity, I'm going to go buy this buy a nice place, a weekend place in South Beach, and pull it right, pull the rug right from underneath the guy. And I'm my, my his loss is going to be my total gain. Absolutely. And I'm, and I'm just waiting for the opportunity. But I appreciate it. I mean, I, I really appreciate it a lot. I, I mean, I we, we we got you on the air down here now, so I got a lot of the guys that I work with listening to you. And I mean, 
This show right here is the most it's the most original format of any show I've ever heard. I love this show. It's organized. It's easy to. It's just. It, I, I love it. It's entertainment. I, this is, you have the best show, and and, and I, you're the best, Tom. That's all I got to say. Thank you for that, John. And Tom, one more thing. Can you blow me the hell up? You know I can. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, the Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, I have a, a comment on something that I heard you say um, a couple callers ago. I heard you talking about how people don't benefit from having kids. And I had a little problem with that because I, I understand what you're saying about... That's not, that's, not what I, that's not what I said. I mean, there are certainly people who... Yeah, enjoy having kids, uh, enjoy the experience. I, I never said that. Okay, well, I, I just took it as... What I said was that there's no benefit to getting married for a man. There is a benefit for kids to get, for, for people to be married, but not for a man. That's what I said. Okay, well, I, I'm glad you're clarifying that because, I mean... I, I don't have I, to I, clarify I, it. You're the only person who didn't get it. Well, I, I do, but, you know... Uh, Tom, you said that, of course, we're going to put our kids first, especially financially. Our kids aren't going to go out and, and earn a living themselves. So, Well, everybody does it. I think many people have kids they can't afford. Many people have too many kids, so they can't pay attention to all their kids. I totally agree with that, Tom. I, I think that that a lot of problems come up from people who have too many kids, and then people can't pay the right amount of I think people who can't afford have. to have kids shouldn't be having them. I agree, but I can't afford to have kids, and, and I always put my kids first, and I, I feel like that's the way it should be. I'm a, I'm a school teacher, and I see, I see a lot of kids who aren't put first, and I see what happens because they aren't put first or because they do have too many other kids living in the home. And, and you know, I mean, I'm somebody who's doing it right and, and has a couple of kids myself. As long as you accept the idea that men don't benefit from marriage, I'm with you. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that men don't benefit from marriage. What benefits do you get that you wouldn't get without being married? Well, I, I have the the company of my lovely wife. Which you would have anyway. <laughs> well, no, I understand what you're saying, Tom, about about the, the actual piece of paper, but um It's not know, just it's a piece of paper. It is a that would, it is an both. ironclad contract to give her more than half of everything you have when things don't work out. And one out of two times they don't. Yeah, yeah, I know. I understand. I I come from a good family, and I got, I had a, a pretty good role, mo two good role models. Doesn't as mean as anything. As as marriage goes. Doesn't I, mean I, I, anything. I, I, under, I understand what you're saying statistically that that half of the marriages don't work out, but I think the people who are married have to go in it as the glass is half full. Well, that's well, well that's empty. just like people who jump out of a plane with a parachute on have to believe that the parachute is going to engage. Right. They have to believe that. With that one, right? Uh, the fact that you believe something doesn't mean it's true. Right, but but again, if I if I go into my marriage feeling like I'm going to be one of the the people whose marriages doesn't work, then I'm not doing my wife or myself any favors by even getting married. Well, but the first of all, the point is everybody who gets married thinks it's going to work. Right, that's true. But but half of them are wrong. Yeah, no, that's that's true, and I'm I'm going to believe I'm on I'm on the the, the good half. Well, everyone believes they're on the good half. Yeah, no, then they come home true. and find their wife on the living room floor with their best friend. Right. And then they go, well, I thought it was going to work. I mean, you, <laughs> how many people do you think get married saying, you see, it's going to work, but okay, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> no, absolutely. I know, I know. Well, hey, Tom, it was great talking to you, and I've, I've been a long-time listener. And can you do me the favor of taking me out Halle Berry style, please? I certainly can. Yeah. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number for wide open telephones. Every Friday on the Tom Likas Show, our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom dot com. Tom at blowmeuptom dot com. Or if you're listening to us on the stream, or if you're listening to us uh, on a podcast, remember our show is heard live from three to eight p.m. Pacific time at blowmeuptom dot com. The Tom Likas Show.